Hi, Travel Advisors. Joe Vanderhoff here, your manager of training and development. I'm very excited to be recording the training I typically do at some of our special events on resort. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the agenda. Um, we're going to go over some of the slides and I'll personally guide you through all the information in this deck. Your BDMs have this as well so they can do some in-person stuff along with the Back to the Beaches. So let's get started. All right, so today we're going to look at the benefits of social media, the reasons to have high quality content, uh, why that's important to your brand and our brand, and then tips for getting great content, as well as discuss Instagram, uh, the differences on the platform as far as posts, lives, reels, and stories, and then just making sure you're choosing the right platform for yourself. So let's get started. All right, so the benefits of social media, I know there's a lot of folks that are kind of old school, have the storefront, um, they really are a little bit nervous about social media. So we just wanna say that, hey, for you, this is a great way to engage with your existing audience, your clients, whether you're trying to grow or just maintain the referrals that you have. Uh, it's great to be on social media just to showcase the things you're doing, show your current clients um, different parts of the resorts, and really just give them another level to connect with you. Uh, if you're looking to grow brand new business, maybe you're new to the industry, then social media is a great way to do that quickly uh, by engaging with those clients, um, kind of showcasing things that you're doing and basically gaining an audience from folks that you don't know. So what I like to say is that um, when you post, you wanna give yourself at least an hour to engage with your followers. Meaning once you send a post, um, you want to be able to answer questions and get, you know, you're going to get comments, you're going to get likes, and you want to be able to quickly answer those questions. And maybe they want to see something else. So you can go back to the same place you're at on the resort, take a photo of the restaurant, the beach, uh, whatever that question's in particular to. So with that being said, um, the post should have meaning most of the time, meaning a call to action, uh, maybe a simple question of what's your favorite sandals? What's your favorite beaches resort? Do you like the beach? Do you like the pool? All those little things can be simple call to actions as opposed to aggressive selling. So keep that in mind too, that you always wanna have a way for them to contact you, make sure your bio has your link, whether it's to your website or um, other things that they can contact you through direct messaging and so on. So this is where I'm gonna help you understand what makes great high quality content. So uh, for instance, you are a wedding specialist and you go to a lot of bridal shows. And within those bridal shows, you see all the different decorated booths and you really see who's put the time and energy into it. And that's kind of how you walk down those aisles and you're drawn to certain booths that are really eye catching. It's very similar to social media, right? You're scrolling within the posts that you're scrolling through, something catches your eye, you dive into that post, maybe you read the caption, and then that's kind of how you engage with that particular person that posted that. So same with you, we want high quality images, videos, all kinds of things to, to get that engagement and get that interest from someone on social media. So keep that in mind. We're going to show you how to do that. Um, so let's get into that now. Um, first off, grab your phone, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, and you're going to create a, a photo album basically to keep the content that you're collecting right now. So let's say you're on a back to the beach, uh, beaches and a grill. Uh, what I want you to do is go into your, your iPhone and go into Photos. Top left corner, there's a plus sign. And click Create New Album. And what you'll do there is just name it Beaches and a Grill, you know, whatever you want to name it. And then it's going to make it way easier for you to go back in there uh, in a week, in a month, in a year and find those photos when someone asks you about a particular room category or something um, in regard to that resort. So go ahead and do that. And then Android, it's very similar. You're gonna go in and create an album in your photo section as well. All right, let's just break down what makes a great photo. Um, same thing with you and myself. We go through social media and again, something catches our eye. Uh, typically it's a video or a photo. And I wanna break it down, kind of reverse engineering what makes a great photo. Very simple things that you can practice and we're gonna go through. But let's just start with lighting, composition, and it's an interesting subject that you're looking at. So the, the pictures here, you'll see these later on in the slides. The one on the right here, the waterfall, that is at Sandals Regency Latak in St. Lucia. It's a trick I'm going to show you using live mode on your iPhone. 
And then the one in the middle is South Coast Latitudes, beautiful time of night uh, where I caught that right before the sun went down completely. And that's a, a great shot just because of the lighting and the composition and, and all the things that's going on there with this with the clouds. And then the one on the left is just a super interesting subject. Uh, I bent down a little bit. It's a nice photo of the iguanas there in um, uh, Exuma. When you do the swimming with the pigs, you stop at this island and get to see these little guys. So all three of those things, very easy. We're going to go over them. All right, so the big one here, lighting. Lighting is really everything that makes up a great photo and something that I find very important because that's why it's first. So the simple one is the golden hour. Most people have heard of that, meaning sunrise, sunset. There's that hour window between both that you can get some really great photos. Uh, so I'm just going to walk around this slide here and tell you about them. The, the top left one is Sandals Royal Bohemian. Caught that right at sunset. I think I was out on the pier and the sun was coming down and that cloud just lit up real nicely to kind of help highlight the subject of the, uh, the resort there. The one uh, next to that is Antigua and this was at night. Beautiful photo of the fountain there lit up and again coming in the morning and at night you're going to get different variations of the same photo. Uh, the one in the, beside that, the fruit tray is in Curacao and this is just you know keeping in mind that you can stage your photo. If the lighting is not great, these are always in your room when you get in there. So, so what I did was I grabbed that fruit plate and I moved it over to the window and it added a little extra shadow, softened the light with the curtains, and it just makes for a more flattering photo than if I would have just left it right there on the counter. So just again, things that you can do to manipulate the light and, and kind of see where the pretty light is and move your subject toward that. Top right corner, this is BDM Danielle from Michigan. Curacao as well. She's in the, the beach area where this little uh, teepee is and she's laying down. And I noticed her and then um, had she not had her phone on, it would have been a silhouette. It wouldn't have been as an engaging photo. So this one would be where you can actually use the ambient light, which is the light at night there. It's you know lit up the clouds and then you have some lighting in the background, but also having her turn that cell phone on gave a nice little glow onto her face uh, to make that a really cool shot. The bottom left corner, I love going over this because this is Barbados, same shot two different times a day as you can see. So again, most people like the blue one, it just has a different feel to it and the lights were on in the pool. So I always encourage you to maybe find your favorite spot and go back there in the morning and the afternoon so that you get this variation. All right, and now another way, you know, we always love to be out by the water, whether it's a sunrise, sunset, and just watching that sun go down. This group of uh, guests here are silhouetted, meaning you have a bright subject behind your subject, uh, such as the sun, and it just kind of makes a silhouette. It's a really nice way to, um, if you had guests in your photos, you know, we're not supposed to capture their faces. So this gives you a nice alternative if they're right there on the beach and kind of evokes an emotion of them just chit-chatting and having a great vacation. The one in the bottom right is another kind of combination of reflection and silhouette and sun set all at the same time. This is at San Jose St. Vincent, uh, the pools back by the beach there. Just a beautiful way to kind of capture the stillness and that sun set of the uh, chapel back there and all the reflections too. So lighting, very important. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice how to control the lighting on your phone. So typically when you pick up your phone and hit photo, uh, it's taking a overall feel, overall exposure of what's in the frame on your, on your photo. So meaning if it's very bright, it's very dark, then it's gonna pick something in the middle to expose for. So we wanna be able to control that. So what I want you to do is grab your phone, uh, select camera, and then go to photo. And this works just as well for Androids. So there's gonna be a little yellow box there and you'll notice if you point it towards something very bright, like the, the lights on the ceiling perhaps, and tap the, the light, tap the brightest subject in the frame and you'll see a little yellow box appear. Now you can click that yellow box or that subject and it'll and hold and that'll lock it down and it'll turn bright yellow, a, a bold yellow with a sundial kind of thing beside it. And that allows you now to move that sundial up and down so that you can, you can increase the, the amount of light or decrease it, the exposure. And you wanna always, I would say 90% of the time, what I'm showing you here in this photo is to choose the brightest subject. So let's give the Caribbean, a, for example, use that. And what I've done here is I picked the clouds in the background, which were very bright. 
knowing that I can brighten the shadows, um, but I can't bring down overexposed things. I'm gonna pick the brightest subject, the clouds, I click that, and then I save, I take that photo. And then I'll show you how to edit that to where you can see I've lightened my face up and the, and the brightest subject is still bright and it looks great. So uh, play with that a little bit, touch the screen, you can touch all around the screen and then pick your brightest subject. If you need to lock the focus and exposure, you hold it, move the sundial up and down, and then click for the photo. And that'll work the same in video as well. All right, we're gonna talk about composition. This is how you're framing the photo or the video and a really easy way to, to learn some basics here to get great shots and also go back into your old photos and uh, recrop them as well, meaning recompose them. So let's talk about the three um, basic rules of composition, the rule of thirds, leading lines, and framing. So we're gonna start with rule of thirds. Basically, it's just a way to think about the framing on your, your phone or your camera in a way that you put these imaginary lines, which will actually put the lines on your um, phone for you. So you have like a tic-tac-toe set here and what it's saying is like your main subject here, you can see the curacao runs right down that line. Um, same thing on the right. If you imagine the lines on the, the three photos on the right, you would show the line on the right. Sandals would go right through that. Uh, and then the, the flower, same thing. It would be the line on the left. And then the uh, Grenada reflection on the bottom, the line would go through the bottom and then on the right as well. So you can line your subject up on the line, the intersection of the line, and by all means, you can still put your subject dead center on that frame too. So something to play with. And once you start seeing these things, um, your, your composition is going to quickly pick up. Your pictures are going to look a lot better just by knowing this one simple rule. And also I encourage you when you watch movies to see the rule of thirds used quite often uh, in shots on movies. So let's move into the um, grid lines on your phone. So with an Apple phone, you're gonna go into your settings icon, which looks like the little gearbox. Uh, from there, you're gonna go to camera and you can type it in on the top or scroll down to camera. And once you're in there, there's gonna be a section that says composition and it says grid. And all you need to do is turn that toggle on. Uh, Android, similar uh, way to get to that. I think you have a few extra options for your grid lines. Um, I think the three lines uh, is, is fine, just so it looks like the one on the screen here, uh, where you can kind of practice lining things up with those imaginary lines there. So now framing. Framing is a really fun way, especially on resort, to get creative with just the photo itself. Uh, I think framing can help uh, tell a story it evokes a different emotion. For instance, the, the photo there of the um, airline seat on the left, you know, I'm looking out the window and I've included the window purposely because it pictures yourself, you can picture yourself sitting in that seat, looking out the window on your trip, and it just gives a different emotion than had I put that photo right up to the window. So that's framing, meaning the subject is in there and it's got a nice frame around it. Uh, the one in the middle is Sandals Royal Bohemian. There's a really pretty clock wall and one of the buildings there and I like using someone taking a photo and I take a photo of them taking the photo and it frames it nicely too. The top right corner is Los Angeles, California and I could have just taken the shot and it would have been a cool you know foggy uh, landscape shot of downtown however I wanted to include the trees because we were hiking around Griffith Observatory and it tells a different story than just kind of that flat cityscape. Bottom right corner is our executive team in Dallas at the American Airlines headquarters where I wanted to frame them in a way, not just using the cars at the bottom, but uh, American Airlines has this beautiful headquarters and it had this nice glass canopy that went around. So you can see there it kind of completes a circle with the cars, just a nice way to frame those subjects and keep it uh, engaging as well. So when you're walking around resort, you'll see this in the hallways and the staircases quite a bit where you'll look down the hallway and there'll be this cutout at the end of the, the row of rooms. And through that, you can see the beach or trees or something like that. And, and capturing that little cutout is a nice way to, to practice your framing. So look for those on your resort tour as well. All right, leading lines is a fun one. I, I like to show this as uh, the mindset of you're on a country road and the yellow dots or the yellow lines go right down the road. Now we know they go straight, but the perspective shows them going this way. 
So uh, same thing here, your, your eyes drawn to whatever's at the end of that row, the subject that kind of narrows for you. So all around resort, you're gonna see things. Let's start with uh, Sandals Montego Bay, that first photo there. Um, what that is is the swim outs, but it's an angle. So I've angled it to where the chairs kind of cut through. It's not a straight on shot. As well as Curacao, this is the Mini Coopers there in Curacao. And you know, again, not taking it straight, I've taken it at an angle so that line kind of goes in and it's a little bit more engaging. South coast, top right corner, the, the round of all village there, that pool just goes right through and it keeps your eye going through the, um, the village. Uh, again, this is just a way for you as the photographer or the videographer to tell your um, viewer what you want them to see, what is the subject and what do you want them to look at. Antigua is a great one. We had the nice little walkway going right to the lobby there. And then San Jose St. Vincent has all these um, nice little uh, cabanas that have all these chairs. And actually an advisor just asked me if there was a lot of cabanas there and I took this photo for her reference. but. You know, you can see how the lines just line up symmetrically. It's beautiful. And then Royal Bohemian with the uh, Hobie Cats and Kayaks. And then Curacao again there at Butch's. So all kinds of fun stuff to look for when you're roaming around the resorts uh, regarding leading lines. Interesting subject. This is probably the easiest one. Uh, I get heckled a lot for this. The Everything's kind of interesting when we're walking around resort. But I like to also say adding an interesting subject to the photo, so staging it. And I'll, I'll talk about that. For instance, the first one here is in St. Lucia, the Grand, and these hammocks were in the water. So I could have took a pretty picture of just the water and the mountains, and that's nice too. But you know, walking around and, and getting that hammock in there, also with the mountains, again, tells a different story of relaxing in this beautiful water in a beautiful destination. Uh, if you've ever been to Beaches Turks, you know these cats it's soy, this cat is still there. I just saw it a few months ago. Uh, beautiful green eyes, gray, and it just was coming right for me. Uh, really pretty interesting, you know, just to capture it in that way too. And of course, all inclusive, you get, you know, great cocktails all over the resorts and it's your job to take photos of those and enjoy them. So this is one here at Sandal St. Vincent in the rum bar, uh, but just getting different angles we're gonna go into getting that. The top one I really like, top right corner is in Sandals Royal Caribbean where I was paddle boarding as you can see. But had I took that photo a little bit, cropped the paddleboard out, you wouldn't have noticed what I was doing and like paddleboard is included. So maybe, you know, on Facebook someone would see that, oh, I didn't know paddleboard was including and you, it looks beautiful. And so all these little things where it makes the photo a little bit more interesting and also tells a story of maybe what you're doing. That's Sandals uh, Emerald Bay. You know, no description needed there. It's a beautiful beach, but that water's really going to engage some people as they're scrolling too. San Jose St. Vincent, um, if you're in the uh, Lady Palm, the looking down, there's these boats, and I was in the top floor, and it was just a beautiful scene to capture these, uh, but just noticing things as you're walking around. That's kind of what I think photography can do for you. Start noticing little things. So Curacao, um, this is the pool, obviously, at Curacao, but I'm on the deck in the lobby, and I just happen to sit my cappuccino down. And, you know, adding that cappuccino, again, tells a story. I'm out, maybe it's the morning, and I'm having my cup of coffee, looking out at this beautiful pool. Um, adding that element to it just tells another story. The Dutch bicycles in Curacao are really fun to get around on, and, you know, maybe your clients don't know that those bicycles are there. So I literally went down to photograph that peninsula in the background, and um, just parked the bike right there and it kind of made the shot. So did that a few different times. All right, perspective. So this is where I tell people, this is how you get good at seeing things and good at photography and videography. Um, imagine me telling you to take a photo of your water bottle and you just snap away. But if I say, take a creative photo of your water bottle, I think that flips a switch and now you're thinking, okay, I can do this and this and this and you know, Having that different word as part of that um, ask, it makes it very different for you to go out and, and do these things. So for instance, the bottom left corner is in Curacao and I took several different photos of this martini and you can judge which one you like better, one or two, but I took probably 10 shots of this from different angles and, and just seeing how the angle makes the, the, the drink look different and the photo look different and how it makes you feel. All those things come into play. So I suggest you take at least two to five photos, not boom, 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 but in a different way. So move around top, bottom, angle, and do it that way. And you can see here, um, uh, Senior BDM Ashley Cooker, 
This was her drink photo challenge. This is her drink that she took, and you can see she took several. That's probably just what fit on the screenshot, but we all do this when you get to have that passion for it. Um, it's really fun to just take photos and practice what angles make things look different, and as you can see, she was kind of blurring the background and putting the Hobie cat in there just to, again, add another interesting subject to this. And the one on the right is 2016. You can see the dates. I was um, traveling in a small city in Texas when I moved to Texas. You kind of get bored, so you go out and uh, try different things. I went to Barnes & Noble. It was just after this storm, and the, the sky kind of cleared up, and this amazing sunset popped out of nowhere. So I was in the parking lot, and I found all these mud puddles. And as I'm bending down, they're like the reflection, as you can see, was just amazing. So I would put my phone down. This was an iPhone 7 Plus. You can see, so it's just the tool. It doesn't really matter what phone you have. And you put your lens right on the bottom toward the mud puddle. And voila, I took probably 20 to 50 shots. I can remember 20 to 50 shots of this. Deleted some of them. And um, you'll see one later on. But it's in Lubbock, Texas in a parking lot uh, via a mud puddle and an iPhone 7 Plus. So lots of fun stuff you'll start seeing as you practice these things. And here you go, reflections. Probably one of my favorite types of photography. I, I caught on to it, I think in 2015, 14, I saw some kids doing it uh, at a lake area in uh, Ohio and started to kind of get an eye for it. And I, I do it all over the resort now. So you can see that martinis and the um, lobby in Sandals Road Curacao. It's got a kind of a marble finish, so it's reflective. So not just pools and things. And then you see Dunn's there top right. Bottom left is Sandals South Coast. There's the Lubbock photo I chose, uh, and then beaches, Turks and Caicos. So as long as the water is really still and you can get your lens low, it makes for a beautiful photo. All right, something, a little tip here I wanna show you. If you have a iPhone 7 Plus or beyond, uh, you have what's called portrait mode. A lot of people will use this uh, to simulate a professional camera, meaning you can blur the background and isolate the subject. As you can see here, the bike is in focus in the first photo, and then everything is in focus in the second photo. So you can kind of gauge for yourself which one you like better, but it gives you the option to do that. And how you do it is you go into your camera, you'll have all these photo video things, and you'll have portrait mode. And you'll have an arrow at the top, and depending on your phone, it may be a little different, but the arrow allows you now to open your aperture, which is the F number, the F stop. And you can actually scroll left or right and you'll see it instantly on your phone how that background is affected by the number. So the easiest way to remember this is the lower the number, the less in focus. The lower the number, the less in focus. The higher the number, everything's in focus. Um, and then you have that zoom option, one, two, or three, depending on your phone. So I suggest you go out and play with this too. When you do a three times zoom, it compresses, uh, meaning the bike looks <coughs> very close to the building, to the sign, as opposed to if you used a one, uh, it would look you know, more natural. But it gives you a cool compression. So keep that in mind. This is another thing to do with food too. And I know Android has a great uh, food um, option on their phones. All right, so here's the tip and trick that I shared with that first photo, and I've done an Instagram reel on this, but shooting in live mode. I only shoot in live mode for things like this. Um, so what you do is you open your camera, and you can play with this when you're out on resort or wherever where there's moving, whether it's traffic, uh, waterfalls, things like that where there's movement. You would select in the top right corner the little kind of star, I'm not sure what kind of symbol that is, circles, but you click that to turn it on and click it to turn it off. So you're gonna click it to turn it on and then take your photo as I did of the waterfall, something moving. Now you have to be very steady or use a tripod because it's gonna say live. I think it says it in yellow. It'll say live for like half a second and you need to be holding still that whole time. And then go into your, once you've taken that photo, you're gonna go into your photo library, find the photo and the middle one here shows you it's gonna say live in the top left corner so you click that live and then go down to long exposure and that's where you'll get this magic of the long exposure and you'll see the photo on the right as the result of that. As long as you held still, it should look like that. Um, this was very tricky back in the, the day of film. I mean, you film and even cameras, you had to have some filters and do it the right time of day. So the fact that we can do this broad daylight is pretty amazing. So definitely play with that, it's a great one. All right, so now we're gonna talk about editing. 
So you should have downloaded the Snapseed app. If you have not done so, please do that now. Snapseed is a free photo editing app. Uh, I love it. I always do a little training on this. Now there's a lot of editing apps out there. Again, if you are comfortable with something else or want to spend money, by all means, do what you're comfortable with. I like showcasing this one because you don't have to create an account. It's free and it does a lot of amazing things for being free. So let's start with your, um, your going to your um, Snapseed app and open it. Now, if you have to do anything because you just downloaded it, feel free to do that. What you want to do is get to where there's a gray plus sign and then you'll get there and you'll click that gray plus sign and then what you'll do is just pick a photo. So just select any photo and we're going to go in and, and do some things to it real quick. Now you can see there's a ton of tools here to use but we're going to focus on three and then I suggest you know on your flight home or whenever you have time play with all these tools just so you know what they do. So first thing is you got your photo. The bottom middle you'll see tools. You click tools and then top left corner is tune image and from there I want you to I use my thumb so you scroll up or down it's going to show you brightness contrast saturation it's going to show you a menu of things under tune image so then you you leave the blue or highlight the one you want like ambiance and then you can take your finger off and in the top of that picture it's going to say ambiance and you go left or right now with your thumb or finger to increase or decrease that particular tool so <clears throat> ambiance makes a big difference sometimes, but then you're done with ambiance, scroll up or down, maybe you find shadows and you increase your shadows. And that'll take some time to play with and get to, to used to, but uh, it's a great tool. So again, we're just gonna do this quickly, boom, boom, get a feel for it. And then we're gonna go to the check mark in the bottom right corner, hit that, and we're gonna move to the next tool. All right, everybody loves this one. This is the healing tool. This is where you can remove objects from your photo. It's a little tricky sometimes, the easier the object if it's, let's say you're at the beach and there's someone in the water. And because all that water is pretty much the same color and texture and that person's small, you can remove them pretty, pretty easily. <clears throat> but if it gets to be something like this one where there's a bird, luckily the clouds are all the same, it takes a little bit more technique. So let's take some time with this. So you're gonna go to the bottom again, tools, and you'll click healing it looks like band-aids and then once you're in there um, you can zoom in meaning you're gonna pinch with your fingers if there's something small you want to remove or if it's like I said the beach and there's someone in the water you can just quickly go like that and remove them without zooming in so it takes a little practice zooming in and out it's not perfect but again it's free uh, some of the phones and other apps do this much better, but I think you know once you get the hang of it It's pretty easy to quickly remove things So the nice thing about this is if you are at the beach and you're waiting for this perfect shot and some guy keeps swimming laps You know now, you know, you don't have to wait for him Just get him in the right spot and he's gone and that'll save you You know 20 30 minutes of your time waiting for that guy to get out of your way So it's fun to play with All right, same thing check mark in the bottom right corner and then we're gonna move on to the last tool I'm gonna show you all right, so this is the crop tool. This is what I was telling you about understanding composition and being able to come back to old photos and then kind of recompose them now based on your new knowledge. So for instance, um, same thing, tools, and then top right corner, depending on your phone, you'll, you'll see the crop option, you click that. But let me kind of describe what this is. It's removing unwanted, uh, ob not unwanted objects, but unwanted um, extra space from the photo, let's say. So for instance, the top photo, I was using framing. I mean, this is downtown Austin uh, on the lake, but I was leaving the trees similar to the Los Angeles photo. But you lost the subject, which was the paddleboarder. So I needed to kind of zoom in. Of course, I've already left, taken the photo. So what I'm gonna do is crop the trees out, kind of zooming in essentially. So what I've done is added those lines, I crop them, and then now you can see the subject being the paddleboarders in the buildings, it's a more flattering shot. And that's it. So again, if you know the rule of thirds and things like that, you can go back into your old photos, recrop them, recompose them, and then they're, they're great again, right? So play around with that. There's ways you can um, pick the ratio. Say you know you wanna crop something so it fits onto Instagram or vertical format nine by 16. When you're cropping, it will give you those ratios or you can do free and the free form or free and that just allows you to kind of do it how you need to. So a little practice there, but. 
So now that you've done all those things to the photo, you want to save it in a way that preserves the original picture and the new one. So you're going to go bottom right corner, it says export, and then you scroll all the way down and click export. So that'll keep the original one in your photo album and it's going to add the new one. So you can always go back to that original one too. Uh, keep in mind sometimes when you edit on your phone, it may or may not do that depending on your settings. So this is why I like to export from here to have both copies. All right, so if you have now mastered photography, you understand composition, the leading lines and the, the rules of thirds and all these fun things and especially lighting, now you can translate that all into video. So for instance, yeah, if you're shooting a photo, vertical photo with your phone, just like that, and I say just hold it there for two to three seconds and now you have a video and you can use that in your reels or uh, stories, whatever, but you understand the principles to make it look pretty. So number one, always wipe your lens. Uh, I see people all the time get a great photo, great video, and I can, as I'm scrolling, I know exactly what happened. It's blurry, it's hazy, and they just forgot to wipe the lens. And remember, you have the lens on the back and the one on the front if you're doing selfies. Uh, I always recommend gimbals. Uh, if you're doing room tours, just the travel advisor lifestyle of always on resorts, roaming around, doing room tours, a gimbal is a device that you put your phone into and it has a couple arms, three accesses, and it means when you walk smooth, that footage is not going like this, it's smooth. And that they're pretty inexpensive, 60 to you know $300, how much you wanna spend. I recommend DJI all the time is a great company that I've bought all my things from and they do all kinds of stuff outside of just gimbals. Um, with that being said, when you're shooting, just like photos and video, vertical, so up and down, or horizontal. So I recommend if you can only shoot one, let's say you are doing a room tour and everybody's got to get in and out, do it horizontally because you can use a horizontal format in both um, ways. Meaning, so if it's like this and you need it to be like this, you can zoom in and that subject would be here, but you're losing a little resolution. But if you shoot it like this, you're not going to be able to really use it horizontally. So just keep that in mind, you know, before you take a photo or video, maybe think, what am I going to use this for? If everything's going to be a reel and you can shoot vertical all day, you're good to go. Um, and just remember the tips, the lighting. Always think about where the lighting is. Is it behind me? Is that going to be more flattering than if it's bright in the subject's face? Is it dark? You know, all these things come into play uh, when you're doing video more so than just with photos. It's harder to correct sometimes in video than with photos. The composition, the subject, again, staging your video, staging your photo, all those things you want to consider uh, before recording. And the biggest difference with video is now you have audio especially if you are doing a room tour and you're talking or you're on the beach and you're talking about your experience or how beautiful this beach is, you can always hear that wind. And sometimes after the fact you're home and you're watching the video and it's so noisy, uh, I would just suggest getting a nice microphone. You can get really good ones that plug in right to your phone off Amazon for $30, $40, or you can spend more, $100, $300, how much you wanna spend on it, but definitely having a microphone is going to cut out a lot of noise. I've done a, a nice little training on Instagram with this too if you want to check it out. Just hearing the difference between having a microphone and not having a microphone. Shots that I recommend, if you're, not, if you're new to video editing uh, or you don't even want to do video editing, just take a video, you know, four to ten seconds and then you can do light editing if need be. Just like a photo you know, but four to seconds, four to 10 seconds, and you can use that on a reel, stories, uh, all kinds of stuff. So just kind of get used to doing that too if you're just taking photos, maybe same structure that you took the photo, just click video and kind of get used to that. All right, uh, the voiceover is nice. You have a lot of options for Instagram will let you do a voiceover. I use a video editing program called CapCut. Very easy to do voiceovers, meaning you're doing a room tour, and you're trying to remember what to say and you're bumping into stuff and you're just scrap that idea. I'm just going to do the room tour and I want to kind of narrate it afterwards. And what I've done is I've recorded the video and then I'll go into Instagram or CapCut and I'll actually read the room category description that we have on our resort fact sheets. And it's smooth, I'm calm, it's not windy. And then that just lays right over the video and it's a narration. It's beautiful. 
So definitely consider that too, and you would want to have a microphone if you could. Um, the different lenses that you use on your camera for photos and videos are going to be typically like a 0.5, very wide. We call that an establishing shot, meaning it showcases everything. And then a medium shot, like a one, these are the numbers. And then a three is a zoom, like I showed you with that portrait mode. So get used to playing around with those. I don't zoom in with my fingers. It can distort and lower the quality sometimes on your, your videos and photos. So I just tap the number and then if I need to move back a little bit or forward a little bit, I do that with my body. But get used to shooting different lenses. See what it does and you'll get an eye for how that compresses it and maybe getting that wide shot for just the documentary. If you're a wedding specialist and you wanna showcase the, the decorations of the table, you really want to show the bride, they want to see everything. But you may want some detail shots, meaning some close-ups of specialty things like the napkins and the flowers and the decorations. And then using cinematic mode. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro or newer, then you have cinematic mode, which is essentially portrait mode for video. It's going to allow you to blur the background out and get these layers. So you want to fill the frame and you also want to have a foreground, background, and, and the subject, and it just makes a more pleasing cinematic looking shot like in the movies. So get used to using them. And the resolution options, uh, when you click video, top right corner, it's going to say HD or 1080 or 4K or whatever. Uh, 4K is a lot. It's going to be a lot of memory. You don't really need that if you're just shooting vert vertical and using it vertical. Same thing if you're shooting horizontal and you're going to use it horizontal, 1080 HD is fine. If you are going to shoot horizontal and you know that you may need it vertical, then 4K because remember you're going to have to zoom in on that. So you want as much quality resolution as possible. And that's the only time I use 4K if I know I'm going to zoom in. Uh, music, so now with even with photos, you can do that with storage. You can add music and all these things with video, you know, it's... Growing up with MTV, I loved the three minute videos and they had this, you know, I was just watching a documentary, Duran Duran, you know, Michael Jackson, all these prints, all these guys would make these cool little videos. And that's kind of what you have the ability to do. The music matters. Um, it sets the tempo for the emotion that's gonna be evoked. You know, are you trying to tell a story about your family's trip? Was it an adventure? Was it quiet and chill? You know, what what is that music gonna entail? Now, with that being said, when you get into Instagram Reels and TikTok, you have trending sounds or trending songs where it has an arrow, and I'm gonna show you that a little bit better or a little bit later. And you may just pick that because you're trying to get more followers. But if you really want to choose your own music, then you know, take some time and pick the right song for the right subject. Okay, so as I was saying, cinematic mode, I'm gonna show you a few examples, but it looks very much like portrait mode. And if you look on the left, that setting there with the um, top right corner of the 4K I mentioned, and then 30 frames per second. You don't really have to worry about that too much right now. I don't wanna to get too technical. But that drop down arrow in the middle, top middle, that allows you to again, uh, move your f-stop up or down, right? So remember, the lower the number, the less in focus. The higher the number, the more in focus. Um, and you'll get a feel for that. What's amazing is on an iPhone, you can actually change that after you've shot the video already, but I'm not gonna get too technical into that. So when you're out, if you have an iPhone 13 Pro or newer, play with cinematic mode. It's really gonna give you a professional movie-like look. So let's look how it does here. Now, again, I was talking about filling the frame. This, this is, pertains to photos or videos. If you look at the heart photo in the middle, you see the blur of the, the framing there. So these are the flowers and the trees and the bushes all around. That's the, the foreground closest to me. And then the subject being the heart sculpture in the middle is in focus. And then the background, the restaurants, the mountains are out of focus. So again, I'm telling you where to look based on that. So let me play this one real quick. And there's just a little slight movement just to let you know it's a video, not a photo. It's a little bit more engaging that way and exciting. And that's it, that was maybe four seconds. Now the other one again is just a nice video. This was a photo I've taken and I wanted to do a video. You can see the leading lines with the shadows and the sun coming through. And then let's just play this. And this is again how easy it is to just hold it there for a few seconds and now you have a, a, a video. 
and you would stitch these together in a reel that we're going to go over a little bit later. So that easy. All right. So here's a tip. When you are in um, Europe or even in the Caribbean, when you're doing a room tour, sometimes you shoot that video and then you notice, man, why are these lights flickering? So they have a different um, wattage system over there, let's just say. And I'm not going to get too technical, but with an iPhone, I'm going to show you how to uh, change your frame rates to get rid of the flickering, basically. And it's only if you need it. So you won't use this all the time. So you're going to go back into your settings and take a picture of this, too. You can take a picture of any of these slides. You go into camera. Top, top of that, you're going to see record video. And you'll click that. And then as you scroll down, you'll see show PAL formats, show PAL formats. All you got to do is turn that on. So what that's going to do is give you 25 frames per second as an option. Now typically we have in the US 24, 30, 60, 120. 25 is going to be the one you'll use anytime you see lights flickering. So say you're doing a room tour, you're at 30 frames per second. Again, that's going to be in the top right corner of your video settings. And you'll see 25 as you click through there. You can see 25 will be an option. Once you hit 25, you shouldn't see flickerings anymore. So again, take a photo of that if you need to. All right. So now we got through all the fun how to do photos and videos. So now you got all these great things. How do you post them? Which part of Instagram are you going to post them to? story, post reels. So I'm just going to kind of briefly go through these and you'll have some time to train and go make some fun stuff. Um, there's so many platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook. So we're going to stick to Instagram for now. So an Instagram post. So I'm just going to give you my case scenario. My audience is travel advisors. So if it's a post specific to, um, let's say commissions or something like that, uh, work related specific to sales and beaches, I'm going to do a post because I only want my followers to see that post. So with a post, it goes out to your followers feeds. And it's not going to go out to the world necessarily. Maybe a hashtag or something you put in there could be seen by others. But what I would recommend, if you just want to keep it to your followers, you do a post. And a post gives you a little bit more room for captions. You'll read those. And as you start scrolling through Facebook, you'll see the differences in these. So take a photo of these if need be too. Now stories. Stories are great for travel advisors. Because when you get to resort, you are you're busy. You're like, especially if it's the first time you've been at this resort, it's beautiful. You're overwhelmed with taking photos and videos. And by the time you get home after or back to your room after the dinner, you're pooped out. You don't want to edit. You don't want to do anything. So Instagram stories are a great way to keep up with pushing out some content, keeping your followers engaged. Meaning you can just put a photo up there. You can put a quick video. You can really put as much as you want. Um, set it to music. All kinds of fun stuff. But this is when you log into your Instagram at the top, you always see, you know, people's pictures and then a little circle around there and you just click on those and it goes through everybody's stories. So I say, hey, when you're on resort and you're busy, this is just a nice, quick, easy way to get something out there, right? And it usually gets a lot of engagement too. So you just click that plus sign at the bottom. You can also click the plus sign on your profile photo in the top left corner and just add your content there. Again, it's up for 24 hours. This is how you build it out. So this is why in the beginning I showed you how to make a photo album so that you're organized. So when you're going to get your story, and imagine this is a month later, you're going to go into recents. You're going to find that album that you created. Um, and then from here you can actually edit little videos. You can add your photos. And then you can, and the, the one on the right here is where you'll add music, text, um, little stickers and things like that, location whatever you want, easy to do, quick and easy. And then if you have a Facebook tied, a Facebook account tied to your Instagram, boom, you can post to both at the same time. So it's a really good way to keep up on your content. All right, so Instagram Reels. This is the fun, creative spot for making, I say videos, but you can add photos. Um, like you see my videos, 30 seconds to a minute on to my Instagram account. It's usually a Reel. Now Reels are gonna be great for you folks that wanna gain more followers. So you're not just concerned about your current followers, or your current clients. You want to show this to the world and potentially have a viral video where it gets viewed thousands and millions of times. So with that being said, this is going to give you that fun um, opportunity to even create the reel within Instagram. If you don't want to use video editing content, I'm going to show you how to do it within here. So again, we're going to start with that plus sign on the bottom. 
and that shows you your categories. And you'll pick real, R-E-E-L, as you can see on the bottom uh, left here, and go into your library that you saved. And then from here, you would select the content. And the top right is just showing you that I was going into my albums and kept everything nice and neat. I'm looking for my Curacao album. Boom, there it is. And now I'm in the Curacao. And I can select with what it's saying in the top right corner, that middle one is select and it has multiple. So you can select multiple things, photos, videos, whatever. But it's just boom, boom, boom. You can add them all up. And then you could add music here. You could all that. Maybe you're done after this. But I'm going to show you how to do a little bit more. And this is something you want to play with. You're not going to break anything. You can save it as a draft. All right. So from here, you could just pick your music. And there's that. And the middle uh, phone here is showing you the arrow. That's what I've highlighted. That's called the trending sound, trending music. And that's going to maybe help push your content out. Maybe that's a popular song right now. Um, if you want it to be done, boom, you pick that. You're good to go. But if you go to the last phone here on the right, click Edit Clips. Now this is going to let you go into the Instagram um, platform to do some editing, whether it's videos or photos. And then here you can see at the bottom, now you can split things, you can add your audio, you can add your text, a lot of the stuff that you could do previously. <clears throat> but let's click on this video and we can speed it up. So why would you want to speed a video up? So let's say you were doing a room tour and you got your gimbal and your brand new, so you're walking real slow, real slow, real slow, and this video ends up being two minutes. So maybe you want that to be a minute, so you can times two, you can speed it up twice the, twice the normal speed, and now maybe it's down to a minute, maybe you edit it a little bit, um, and that's what you would use speed for. You can split it, maybe you wanna cut something out, maybe the beginning of it you were talking or pulling your gimbal up, you can cut that portion out. All right, so there's things you can do there. Again, practice with that. What I love about this is now you can add text and you can add that text anywhere on the timeline of the video. So maybe I just want the text to say good morning and then it's a minute long video and I only want it to say good morning for five seconds. So what I'm showing you here is I typed in the text, I placed it where I want it on the video, meaning I can move it around and then I'm gonna place it within the timeline at the beginning or the end of the middle, wherever I want it for that five seconds. And that gives you a little bit more control as opposed to it being on the whole video the whole time. So again, play with this stuff. All right, so now we have a reel, we're good. We're ready to post it. So what I really encourage you to do is spend some time on your captions. Uh, there's some people that are amazing writers, um, filling this with all kinds of nice descriptions about the beach, the resort. Personally, I struggle with captions, but I know that it's gonna push it out farther to get more views, get more eyes on it. So spend some time with your caption. Uh, I, I, I try to think of things like when I'm writing a caption, I wanna get all the senses in there. The visual one is taken care of. Uh, if I'm using music, song, all those things. But if it's food, you know, taste, touch, all these things you wanna kind of put in your caption to describe, be very descriptive um, to uh, get some keywords in there too. And that'll help push it out. From there, you can go into um, add topics, the middle uh, photo here, and this is where you have Instagram's pre-designated hashtags. You can see on the right, travel is one of the options. So you can pick vacation activities, destinations, hotels, lodging, beaches, all kinds of fun stuff that helps narrow it to the, the niche that you're looking for. You know, As far as people looking for travel, and maybe they're typing in searching for beaches, Turks and Caicos, something to that effect. This will help guide them to you. Uh, the middle one, again, you can save it as a draft or you can share it. So this is where I say go play with it. You're not going to break anything. Instagram Lives. Uh, personally, I haven't done these, but I know a lot of people that do, and it's a really great way to engage with your followers. So imagine you're on the beach, you have your nice microphone, all things good, and then you're able to answer questions directly to your followers and people. You know, Sometimes scheduling a time for this is great so everybody knows when you're going to be live. What I really like is that when I go to live, so I clicked the check mark, and then if you look on the picture on the right here, the bottom, it gives you all those categories. When you go to live, without actually going live, at the top, you'll see your number of followers that are currently online, which I think is pretty cool. So if you're always thinking about when's the best time to post, this may give you an extra reason to post at a particular time. Um, but also a great time to post is when you have time to do the um, engagement things where you're gonna you know, have your call to action. You're also going to be answering questions and going back and forth with your viewers. So keep that in mind too. 
All right, here's a good picture to take, a, or here's a good slide to take a photo of. This is just the summary of all the different things that you can do on Instagram. Just some extra tips for growing your audience. So again, if you're if you're happy with who you have, you're a storefront, you have plenty of business, plenty of referrals, those folks I, I see tend to not care so much to grow their audience or grow their business um, organically, but uh, this is a nice way if you are new to travel uh, advising, then hashtags engage with your audience and then the same thing called actions that we talked about earlier. So a good one to take photos of as well. All right, so if you're doing a resort tour, this is another one. Take a photo of this. Just have a plan when you go out there. During the resort tour, it can go very fast. Um, sometimes there's multiple resorts in that same day, I know. So here's just a list of things to start thinking about what to capture. Um, I say when you're doing the resort tour, you're not going to be able to get everything you want. We all become photographers during this quick roundabout of the resort, but take notes on where you want to go back to. Uh, the If it's raining out, for instance, uh, during one of the days, it's a really good time to go in and do the res the restaurants, you know, the cafes, anything you can do indoor uh, when it's raining out. And then just, again, staging your photos. So just keep these in mind as you're walking around. Uh, if you're not already following me, follow me on Instagram. Uh, appreciate it. Plus, you can you can share anything that I post. So everything's been approved by our social media team, and you're welcome to share it or just ask me for the content as well. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I hope this was helpful. Reach out to your local BDMs as well. They're going to have the same slides, and they love to uh, go over these things with you as well. So talk to you soon. Thanks.